All right. So earlier this week at Apple's WWDC keynote, we heard a bit about differential privacy. Brian Clark from the Next Web is joining us to tell us a bit about why it's such a big deal, even though most uh, seem to kind of gloss over it a little bit. Welcome, Brian. Hey, I, I feel like you're setting everyone up for disappointment when Megan said that I was here to save the day. It's, <laughs> it's okay. I, I did notice that you did not put your cape on, and that's all right. We'll, we'll forgive you this time. But I next... was hoping we could shoot a little further down the hole a little bit and okay. say that I'm just not going to confuse everyone. Right. Okay. You're not. You're going to make us a little less confused. I'm going to try. Okay. That so maybe works. we'll get Sold. to we'll get to the emoji <laughs> with uh, no mouth. To that state? Can we get to that state if we speak in emoji? That's where I'd like to get on differential privacy. Right now I'm at the crying tears emoji, okay. but Jason doesn't know what that is. It's true. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out again. I appreciate that. So first things first, <laughs> what exactly is differential privacy and how is Apple integrating it into its platform? Okay. Um, in my opinion, differential privacy is probably the most important announcement that Apple made at WWDC. It's also probably the one that we're covering the least. Uh, it's not as sexy as emoji, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but I think it has a huge impact in how we're going to use mobile phones moving forward. Uh, it's, it's a cryptographic method that's a lot like encryption, but it gives Apple the ability to kind of peer behind the curtain and uh, extract some of this data. So there's two things you have to understand. One, um, Apple is going to be using more of our data than ever before. And in order to make everyone okay with that, they kind of have to throw out something like this, differential privacy, to make them realize they're not going to be misusing it. Uh, it. It's kind of complex, but it's the best way to sum it up would be to say it's, it's two data sets, one with your data, one without your data. And then by comparing the two, we're able to gleam a little bit of information out of it without really divulging a user's identity. So we all know it's coming. So Megan, the day you get fed up with Jason and you decide to come work at the next web, uh, Apple can determine your salary. Uh, at, at the next uh, at Tech News Today by comparing, say, a spreadsheet from when you were at Tech News Today uh, compared to the one right after you left Tech News Today. And the difference will be your salary. Mm -hmm. So that leaves two really big problems, though. The first one is that if you don't add noise to each entry that a user contributes to this data set, uh, it's really easy to isolate a user and figure out who added the data. So that's the first problem. The second problem is if this user information ever leaks, you really have to kill the database and start all over. If you're not willing to do that, then you're compromising everyone that's in the database and you can reveal their information. <clears throat> and this, so, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say this approach is not, um, is not isolated to just Apple, right? This is, this is, I mean, are others using this right now? Um, we don't really hear about it. I think yeah. the reason that we're hearing about it so much now is because Apple knows that they need a lot of this data in order to kind of progress the machine learning and artificial intelligence that we're all going to come to know and love. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to make for a better user experience, but the problem is we're more privacy com more privacy conscious than ever. So this is kind of their way of getting everyone on board with it. So is it different than just uh, anonymized data? I mean, that's what we sort of always hear when, you know, that, that our, the things that we're entering online are anonymized. Is, is this different than that? Um, yes and no. I mean, it, it's still anonymized data. Uh, the difference is what a lot of companies do with your anonymous data is they, don't, they can't reveal who you are. So I don't know that Jason's looking for the best pizza in New York City. Uh, I do know that someone is, but it's anonymous. So... Uh, what differential data does is it allows you to use the data in aggregate without revealing any individual user. So when someone contributes to this data set, it, it adds to it. And by comparing them, we can say we can get signals that are usable without actually revealing who they are so that they're not putting user profiles, which is a lot of other people, what a lot of other companies use. So do you think this is uh, more of a marketing ploy on Apple's part, just like a, a differentiating them from Google? saying, you know, just throwing a phrase out there like differential privacy, which you said wasn't their creation, but like maybe they are the ones making it, you know, a household phrase for some of us anyway. Do you think it's just a marketing tool for them or is it a real thing that we can count on and look into and, and see that they're doing it differently than Google? It's too early to tell, but Apple's always really been a champion for user privacy. So at this point, I, I tend to I tend to side with them when they bring something out this like this, that it's not a marketing ploy. It's something they're genuinely, genuinely wanting to protect us with. Hmm. Um, are there downsides to this approach? Yeah, if it's done wrong, it can reveal 
it can reveal the data that they're trying not to. Um, but Apple's taking steps to prevent that too. So like I said earlier, by adding noise to each signal that you're adding to the database, it, it keeps you from finding individual users. Um, and then the other problem is about the, if the database becomes compromised, you have to kill it. So what Apple's doing to protect users is they're controlling how much data a single user can contribute to a database. Uh, so rather than just tracking everything you do on your smartphone, they're tracking, like Jason's example, looking for pizza. And it's just contributing to that one small database. Um, and then periodically, they're going to wipe these databases and then start anew with new users contributing. So all of the data that has been collected before is going to be wiped out, basically, and new users will contribute the same data. And that keeps them from having to run into situations like with the FBI where they might have had to turn over user data because now they just don't have it. Right. And that's a big, I think that's a big priority for Apple at this point, you know, in their pursuit of security is to just make it so that they are removed from the equation as much yeah. as, as mm -hmm. possible.